Okay, let's get started. My name is Judy, and this is the Autumn Acorn Knits, a podcast about knitting and crocheting and yarn dyeing and all of the things that happen here at the log cabin with where I live with my husband Joe and our black cat Meryl in New Hampshire. This is episode number 41. And at the end, I am announcing the winner of the giveaway for the uh, 40th episode. So how have you guys been? I have the fan on, so I hope um, you can't hear it. But it is hot here. It is going to be about 90 degrees today. And so I thought I'd podcast early. I don't even know, 10 o'clock in the morning, before it gets too hot. But I have some water ice water and a fan and windows open so we'll see how it goes. I have some works in progress to show you. I have some finished projects, some acquisitions, some general chatter, and then we'll get on to the um, the winner at the end. Let's chat about New Teton for a minute. Uh, as you have heard me talk about before, New Teton is an unspun yarn um, manufactured using no spinning oils or anything else, just water in, in Sweden. Um, and I will put the name of the business down below, uh, but I have coordinated with Carolyn, the owner of the company, and um, she has sent me some of her beautiful yarns and I am going to try to design something. So the first attempt at um, my design is here. Actually, I'm showing you the wrong side. But here's a peek at it. And this is using the colors Storm and Linen. And what I envisioned for this project isn't exactly how it was coming out. So it is going to become something else. And then I'm using a different color for a brand new project. Hopefully it'll come out exactly the way that I envisioned it in the first place. We'll see. Um, but in the meantime, this is going to become something. And the other one is right here in this gorgeous basket that I just got. Um, we went up to clean out Ma Joe's mom's place the other day um, and just just found some beautiful treasures and antiques that are so special so this is one of them this beautiful handled basket I love everything about it the size the color the handle it's just perfect but anyway in it I have my new new Teton project which I'll just show you a little bit of stitch marker. Um, here is the yarn I'm working with. This I don't remember the name of this color, but I'll put it below. I'll look it up. It is gorgeous. Just the most gorgeous shade of orangey with undertones of blacks and grays. And if you see me looking around, it's just because we're having the house stained and there's ladders and movement and people and I'm just ADD. What can I say? So anyway, stay tuned for this fun project coming um, in the next, well, couple of months. I'm having, again, the worst time with this hair. I need a haircut. I keep chopping at it and like, yeah, it's just, it's a mess. I have three finished projects. Well, that's pretty good for me. Okay, here is a finished object. <laughs> Hold on. This is the way it goes. And there's a button. Pretty button. Uh, this is a big oversized sweater that I knit in about two days because I wanted to use up some old yarn. And it's so cozy. Uh, this is made of merino 
and alpaca. There's just that one button at the top, and I love it. It is just so warm and snuggly and oversized, and mm, it's perfect. Let me try to show you the rest of it if I can. Let's see? knit using classic elite yarns toboggan. Oh, there's the label. And as I said, 70% merino, 30% super fine alpaca. Each skein has 80, um, 87 yards. Let me check. 87 yards. And I believe I used about nine hanks for this chunky sweater. So I'll be releasing this one in the fall. Nice. Love it. Okay, what else? Oh, another finished object is this shawl. This is a very generously sized asymmetrical triangular shawl. So that means this side goes up that far and this side goes that far. It has a beautiful ruffle at the bottom with an eye cord bind off. try to show it to you on. It is very long. Um, so when I sit like this, it goes all the way down past my bottom. You could wear it so many different ways. But I am in love with the ruffle. It's my favorite, favorite part about this project. This yarn is a 75% merino, 25% uh, 25, 25 nylon, so this is super wash. And then this is a um, naturally dyed pure wool. But yeah, so I'm really happy with this shawl. It has doesn't have a name yet. Uh, the yarn was dyed by yours truly. There were actually three different skeins that I uh, would switch back and forth. So I would knit a couple of rows with one ball and then a couple of rows with another ball and then switch them off until the end. This ruffle, this ruffle brings me so much joy. This I-cord bind off, and this is on about close to 500 stitches. Took me hours and hours to do, um, but it was so worth it. I just, I love it. So this gives you a really good idea of what the new Tiedon shawl will look like, hint, hint only it will have an extra special touch to it that this doesn't have. Um, I, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do if I'm going to release this as a pattern or not, but I might. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. Um, if you'd like to see it as a pattern, I'd be happy to do so. I have to fix this camera because it looks like Alright, so let me show you a finished object for my granddaughter Blake Violet, who is three months old. This is called the Rosebud by Carolyn of the Noble Thread. 
Carolyn has also been test knitting for me um, for the No Place Like Home pullover. And she's, she has been very, very helpful. But this is a free pattern that she offers on her website, thenoblethread.com, for the little rosebud. And this is it. It's little buttons. Here's the back. I love the bottom. I love the ruffle. I'm into ruffles lately. I used a, a yarn that I dyed called Joseph after the coat of many colors. And can I say, oh, I had this much left over from the skein. That's a lot. This was a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And I used a US size 5 needle. The pattern actually has you change needle sizes, which is a really interesting technique. So you would start with the smallest needle size and work your way down to the largest instead of, I guess that takes the place of the increases, but I didn't <clears throat> have all the size needles that I needed. So I simply used the one needle and it came out great. Tried it on her when she was up to visit last weekend and it almost fits her. She's a peanut, but it almost fits her. And she's three months old. Um, let me see. The sizes it comes in. Three, six, twelve, and eighteen months. And I believe I knit... I may have knit... I think what I did was I knit a bigger size, but with a smaller needle. So that I would get approximately the size that I wanted. So I rec highly recommend this pattern. shown you my seed journal yet. When we planted the garden, I decided I better keep a journal. And we put in, so for example, a picture of the vegetable and any notes and then any progress, how it's going. I also did a map of the garden so I would remember where everything was. Um, but overall, the garden is doing beautifully. I'm so happy that it's pretty maintenance free so far. There are not any weeds, maybe one or two here and there, and I've been watering once or twice a day because we haven't been getting much rain, so it's growing really well. Most everything seems to be doing well, especially the potatoes and the onions. They're doing especially well. So it's so much fun. I'm enjoying it more than I ever thought I would, and um, I just can't wait to eat all the yummies. So far we've been able to eat the lettuce and the tops of the onions so that's what scallions and they're delicious so lots of fun I received the loveliest gift um, last week I think it was from my dear friend Tracy who is knit for girls on Instagram Tracy saw a post that I had put up where I had mentioned receiving my new Tiden yarn from Sweden and she immediately reached out and sent me a message and said that she had some leftover New Tiden yarn that she had purchased for a project and would I like to have it? Would I like to have it? Yes, <laughs> so much. So she generously sent it to me and ah, I was so excited when I got this package, I can't even tell you. So in it, were these two leftover, uh, what are they called, Hanks? No, there's a word, um, of this gorgeous pale pink, blush pink color, and two full wheels, It's not the word, two full plates, that's it, plates of this, look at it, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. As if that wasn't enough, she included this sample of this multicolored gorgeous yarn also. 
I was so excited. And Tracy, I just can't thank you enough. I am going to put these gorgeous yarns to really, really good use. So stay tuned for that. And just thank you from the bottom of my heart. It was lovely. I'm using uh, this linen bag that I received from bedthreads.com.au an Australian company that makes the most beautiful linen bed sheets and we bought a duvet cover as well and yeah they all come in these linen bags so this is where I'm keeping a project that I made once before out of the wrong yarn so this is the Duchesne's, Duchesne's Tea by Leila Rabe this is a pay for pattern a gorgeous lace tea oversized and the version that I made the first time was made with a pure wool and it didn't have much drape this is supposed to be made with a linen yarn so I looked at the yarn recommended and it was just going to cost way too much money so I found Samariana by by Stacy Charles Fine Yarns and this is a 100% linen tape yarn you may already know but it's a lot different than a traditionally spun yarn um, and it has a lot of like airiness to it, an airy quality but I think this is going to be really really drapey which is what I want and it wasn't nearly as expensive as the recommended yarn it ended up being around $61 US dollars with shipping from webs so yeah if you're looking to make this I would recommend that yarn um, we'll see how it goes, but I uh, plan to cast on soon. It uses a um, US 10 and a half needle, and so it should go rather quickly once started. So stay tuned for that fun project. If you've made this, can you please comment below and just let me know what yarn you used and how you liked it. This color is teak, which is, um, it has, I see purple undertones to it. I'm not sure if you do, but I love it so much. So I wanted to take this time just to talk about some of the things that are going on right now in our, in our nation, in our country, in our world, um, around racism. I was talking to my daughter when she came to visit and her husband has a dear friend who is a man of color and he has been trying to give my daughter some advice she's passing that on to me because we really just want to know better and do better and we just I think we don't realize sometimes the prejudices and the racisms racism and the stereotypes that we hold that we may have had since we were children and I truly don't feel like I have a racist bone in my body. I treat every single person kindly. I think that's just what we're supposed to do to other humans, no matter what. But she asked me some questions that made me aware that I may indeed have some racism that I, didn't, I wasn't even consciously aware of. And I am now working very hard at getting rid of. But first it's recognition and then it's change um, so I see a lot of that happening and it makes me really happy and it gives me a lot of hope but I think it's so important just to remember to be kind to everyone and include everyone and just like I said once you know better then you, it's your obligation to do better so there it is thank you for listening and the other thing I really want to talk about a little more is being an HSP or a highly sensitive person. Um, a better word I think is highly intuitive person. But because we're using all of our senses to the max, it's like having them turned up to high all the time. It's normal to be more tired. Um, I find I have to go to bed early and get a full, I mean, eight to 10 hours of sleep. And I'm usually just exhausted by the end of the day just because of having to be, um, you know, on, on high speed all the time with my uh, senses. 
So I find that when I didn't know that I was a highly intuitive person, um, I would just say yes to everything and not, you know, I didn't want to turn down any opportunities or if someone had a favor, it was always going to be yes, yes, yes. And I would end up getting maxed out and then I just would crash hard and not be my best person for myself or my family. So I realized that the thing that I needed to do was to ask for and at times demand time alone time to myself, time to recharge. Uh, I need permission <laughs> to give myself permission to go to bed early and not feel guilty about it. And these are just things that I've had to figure out as I've gotten older and known that this thing I have has a name and it's really a beautiful gift. I look at it as a superpower. I know the word sensitive can have some pretty negative connotations around it, but I think if you can learn to manage it with proper self-care, then it will become a gift to you and you'll start to see it that way. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions at all about what it means to live your best life as an introvert and an HSP, please let me know. I'd love to talk about it. Thanks. Just in case you're not even sure what an HSP is, <laughs> we can just keep it really simple. Um, Number one is the way that you process things. So this is very deep for an HSP. So you're going to, like I said, use all those senses pretty intensely. What you feel, um, you feel more you know, deeply. So that can be sadness, you're gonna feel it deeper, and happiness and joy, you're gonna feel it deeper. So it can be good and bad. Overstimulation, so you get overstimulated really easily and you need that downtime to recharge. Uh, emotional reactivity and empathy, so you're gonna definitely have more compassion than the normal average person. Um, you're going to, at some points, feel other people's energy and you can even take it on as your own sometimes. So when you walk into a room and there's people have just had an argument, you're gonna feel that tension or if someone's just in a bad mood, you're gonna feel that negativity um, or if someone's feeling really happy you may take on that happiness as well so that's a really good thing um, you also tend to sense the subtle so you'll pick up on things that other people won't you may just instantly recognize that someone's a little bit down and that's a good thing because then you can ask them how they're doing and you can address it so a lot of empathy um, yeah, that's about that. Hope that helped. I also wanted to tell you that at the end of the video, I have added some additional footage um, of some things that we've been doing and um, just some random family shots. So I hope you enjoy that. It's time to announce the giveaway. So if you remember during the last episode, I wanted to do a giveaway for because it was episode number 40 and I just thought that was a nice even number. So we I am yeah, I won't go into all of the prizes, but here they are. Also included in this giveaway is a free pattern Fleur de Bouton by Andrea Patron. Thank you so much Andrea for donating this beautiful shawl pattern. I will make sure I put a picture here. Um, so you'll receive all of this plus that pattern. So there were 61 wonderful comments. Joe and I read them all and we really enjoyed hearing about how you discovered me, how you discovered the podcast. Uh, it was just so much fun. I loved hearing about where you all live and just how long you've been following. Some of you have been following for more than two years. Some of you just found me. Um, anyway, I entered in all 61 entries into the random number generator and the winner was number 40. And it is Mama Grizzly Knits. And she said, I believe I've known you for two years. We're friends on Instagram. Mommy Grizzly Knits, love your podcast, love seeing the snow pictures, LOL. 
So please reach out to me with your mailing address and I will ship out your package. Congratulations. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. I know it was a little different than usual, but sometimes I just, I, I like to change it up a bit. I really love talking to you today, and I hope that you get a chance to practice some self-care if you need it, and I hope that that includes knitting or crocheting or anything crafty, really. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.